There are not a lot of characters in Genshin Impact that can be considered the best. Sure, there's a lot of great ones, but most of the time they're only tailored to one role. Being able to be both a support and a DPS makes a character really valuable. And with that being said, I think the best character in Genshin Impact is Zhongli. I think people overlook his DPS capabilities because of his amazing shield, which is fair, but I still don't feel people give Zhongli his due when it comes to damage output. He's so good that you can solo the game with him and it'd be super easy. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Here are the rules. I can only use Zhongli in battle. Any puzzles that require another element can be completed with another character. No healing items in battle, no co-op, and all pole arms are allowed. Now let's see if you can beat Genshin Impact using only Zhongli. First, we actually have to get Zhongli. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to get him by just re-rolling accounts. So let's just get this over with. The Zhongli. There he is. There he is, gold, just like Zhongli. Just give it to me. Sacrifice sword, don't care about that when we have... Geo Daddy! Now we can start. First is Amber's Domain. We were able to skip it by using our pillar to platform around the domain and glide to trigger the door of resurrection. Next is Kai's Domain. The enemies were easy and we were able to glide across the water and next is Lisa's Domain. We easily performed the skip and that's the end of Act 1. Now we need to get to AR-10 to start Act 2, but I have a different idea. Remember when I said this in physical damage only? But I developed this new strategy for AR grinding, and I call it do everything you can before doing the Arkham Quest. Well, I'm gonna take it literally. First, I did a bunch of adventure handbook tasks alongside Animoculi hunting. After under an hour of doing that, we're at AR-10, and this gives us a 10 pull on standard banner. So let's do it. 4 star pole arm, 4 star pole arm, 4 star pole arm. What the what the fuck? Why? What the fuck? Moving swiftly forward. After completing the three barrier quests and collecting the rest of the animoculi I could, we go to Liyue. We do a few quests that net us a few Primo gems and air experience. After reaching air 15, we ascend all our characters, which makes Zhongli poor again. That means we can also ascend Zhongli, which gives us his first passive talent. It makes it so every time we get hit when we have a shield, it makes it stronger, which is useful for stronger enemies. This gives us a 10 pull on standard banner. 4 star pull arm, 4 star pull arm, 4 star pull arm, 4 star pull arm, that's not a 4 star pull arm. It's a delay, so that means a character. Imagine being a shield character that doesn't have a shield as good as Zhongli's. Next is a whole lot of exploring in Liyue for mainly chests and geoculi, and around this time I switched to White Tassel. We don't really have to build around a shield because none of the enemies at this point in the game are going to be able to break a shield either way. After doing that for a few hours, I decided to take a detour and fight the geohypostasis for later. Unlike a certain other character, Zhongli does extremely well against the geohypostasis. His elemental skill absolutely destroys the pillars, and he doesn't have to wait 12 seconds to attack him when he drops. Next we complete some world quests in Liyue, and now it's time to do some story quests. The ones that we have available are Kaya's story quest, Lisa's story quest, Amber's story quest, and Zhangling's story quest. At AR-27 I started to explore Dragonspine. When I said I did everything, I meant everything. In Dragonspine we find our toughest battle of the playthrough. There's a quest in Dragonspine that requires you to get three different boxes to open a door, and one of them is guarded by three Abyss Mages that you have to beat in a minute. The two Cryo Abyss Mages are fine, but the Hydro Abyss Mage does not take much damage from my Geo attacks. I spent around 50 minutes trying to beat this, and when I finally did I only had less than a second left on the clock. I guess it would be a good time to go over my build. We have Two Beast Berserker and Two Beast Exile. Berserker is here to raise our crit rate and Exile is here to give us more asteroids. After raising the Skyfrost Nail, collecting Snow Team Star Silver, and getting more Crimson at Gates, it's finally time to start Act 2 of Mondstadt. At the end of that long AR grind, we're at AR 23. We meet that far, and he takes us to Windrise to fight Knight of the Storm. We brought order to him, and next we meet Zhongli's boyfriend. 
Next is the Fatui hideout. The only fight worth mentioning here is the agent, and he wasn't even able to hide from us because of petrification. Petrification is so nice to have. It's like a better version of Freeze. Next we have to get three teardrop crystals to fix the Holy Liar. First was the Ruined Guard, and he was absolutely murdered. Next we did the Domain, and everybody suffered the Wrath of the Rock. We hear the thematically appropriate line, I prefer to be crushed to death by a meteorite. Oh? And then rob some hilly trolls. Now it's time to call the Valen. You robbing son of a bitch. What? I will have order! That's the end of Act 2, and we can automatically start Act 3. The Abyss Mage and Hilly Trolls of the Gate of Storm Terror's Lair are destroyed, and next we activate three light actuators with little trouble. Before fighting the Valen, I collected the rest of the end moculi, and now our statue is at level 10. Well, not our statue. That bar statue. We look at Zhongli's boyfriend and then fight to Valen. It took three phases, but that's only because I wanted to finish it off cinematically. Order guide you! Devala was really easy, obviously. Despite everything we did to help that bard, he still goes and gets his gnosis taken. Zhongli could never. <laughs> right? We can automatically start Liu Act 1, but completing Act 3 unlocks Zhongli's boyfriend's story quest and Razor's story quest. But before we even do those, we need to do the Ascension Domain. The entire domain leading up to the final enemy was pretty easy. Why did I say leading up to the final enemy? Because we have to take down Aleph's three prisms with a Zhongli. I thought that you would have to burst the prism to take them down, but I discovered this trick where you can place your pillar on the prism you want to destroy, then place it on another one after the prism is knocked to half HP, and then once the cooldown is up, place the pillar back onto the prism you want to destroy. It just barely takes down the prism. Now that we're done with that, we can do the story quest. First I did Zhongli's boyfriend's story quest, and then did Racer's story quest. Reaching AR-26 also unlocks Zingcho's story quest, which we do as well. Now we can start Liyue Act 1. We die, and then we go tell the Adepti about our death. They're probably gonna see right through our lie, but whatever. First was Mooncarver, and because Mooncarver's buff raises your energy recharge, we basically had infinite asteroids. Next was Mountain Shaver, and because we're the master miner Zhongli, we quickly found the guy's brother in the amber. Next is Cloud Retainer, and all we had to do was just glide off a rock to skip the domain. Lastly is our son. The only thing that matters in this part of the quest is the Ruin Hunter. He was destroyed, and that marks the end of Act 1. Next is Act 2. We meet our main character, and then go to boil some rocks. The hilly trolls were crumbled away, but we couldn't heat the pot, so we just called on the legal lady from Liyue. Next is Madame Ping's teapot. All that were in there were some slimes, and they were all easy, including the Geo Slime. Next were the treasure hoarders at Guizhong Ballista, and to avenge our dead girlfriend, we destroyed them. We need to get to AR-28 to start Liyue Act 3. We're close to AR-28, but not quite there. So we do some runs of the Trial Grounds of Thunder, and that's enough to get us to AR-28. The tired Mujina girl from Inazuma helps us trigger the enema mechanism in the mountains, and then we fight some Milith at Guizhong Ballista. Next, we meet up with ourselves to sing to some flowers. It's about damn time. In a minute, I'm gonna need a senti monster or a Kwame to help me out. Feeling hissy, cause my missy's sleeping blissy till I find those miraculous. Now it's time to fight the ginger. He was absolutely destroyed. His attacks aren't strong enough to break past Zhongli's shield, and in his third phase, he's a joke. If you think about it, in this playthrough, Zhongli actually fights Osile instead of trading his gnosis. Never mind, he still ends up trading his gnosis. At least he didn't get it stolen, unlike that bard. Now we have to complete both Dane's Leaf quests, but before then we fought more Geo Hypostasis. Afterwards we start the Dane's Leaf quest. Now is a good time to say how much I love Zhongli when facing Hydro Abyss Mages. We can just use our normal attack against the bubble to destroy it so we don't get trapped. Also Zhongli's asteroid is very useful for making fights more manageable because of petrification. Even the final fight of We Will Be Reunited was a breeze. Now that we're AR-30, we can ascend Zhongli once again and start the Inazuma Prologue quest. And there's not much to comment on here. The tournament was easy, the slimes were easy, and the treasure hoarders were easy. Now it's time for Inazuma Act 1. The first part of Inazuma Act 1 is a lot of running around at Rito and talking to Toma, which doesn't make for great challenge content. Before doing the transport mission though, I grinded for Zhongli's talents. I got all his talents to 4, which noticeably improved his strength. 
Next, we need to bail somebody out of prison, and all that were there were just a bunch of Tenryo Commission soldiers, which have nothing on Liwa's military force, the Millilith. That's the end of Act 1. Now I have to complete Ayaka's and Yormia's story quest. The only reason Ayaka's story quest took as long as it did is because I was barely playing the quest because I hate this quest and Ayaka. But after suffering through that, I grinded for two-piece Pale Flame artifacts. For this challenge, we're mostly attacking with our normal attacks, so physical Zhongli is not the worst thing to go for. We're still keeping Berserker because of the crit rate boost. Now we can start Act 2 and Zhongli can try to knock some sense into Ball. Of course, we destroy her because Zhongli's shield is built different. Even after we lose this shield, it's still easy because Zhongli's shield is not a crutch for me. Now we have to save the Virgin and go to the Resistance Camp. At the Resistance Camp, we have to do the archery demonstration. Which we can't do. So we call on the other character with a worse shield. Next, we go to the front lines to fight some absolutely pathetic soldiers. Again, nothing on the Millilith. Now it's time for Act 3. We started by clearing some Ronin around Watatsumi Island and then go to the three Electro Monuments. And the Geo Archon's great, but he's not Electro. So come on out, Kudo Sara. You still have nothing on the Millilith. The Electro Lone Troll that appears was destroyed. The Virgin dies and we go to the Delusion Factory and obliterate all the Fatui members. I cannot stress enough how useful Petrify is. It's even able to turn the Electro Hammer guy to dust. We meet Scaramouche, then meet Yaimiko, but who cares about those two when... <laughs> it's Sayu! Oh my what god! I've never really gone into depth about the Tenryo Commission battle, but it's always pretty lengthy. But once again, because of his burst, he destroyed them all easily. Once again, nothing on the Millilith. Now it's time for Senora, and the entire battle took less than 5 minutes. She can't hit us because of shield, and we can hit her pretty hard because of our pale flame set. <laughs> Lastly is Raiden Shogun, and Zhongli proves how much better he really is. He destroys her both in the first phase and second phase, and that marks the end of Inazuma Act 3. Now I have to do the Dainsleth Chasm quest and get to AR-35. When we reach AR-35, we'll be able to ascend ourselves again, so that means we have to fight Gimel some more. Once again, it wasn't that bad. It took a while to fight him four times, but not hard. We already completed the Chasm World quest, so we can automatically start the Dane's Leaf Chasm quest. I thought that all the Abyss enemies were going to be pretty slow, but the only slow one was the Hydro Abyss Herald. Everybody else was quite easy, and for the Electro Abyss Selector, we barely even had to move. Completing this quest gets us to AR-35, which means we can ascend ourselves and do the Ascension Domain, which went basically the same as it did at AR-25. This gets us another passive talent, and if you want to know how useful this is, just look at this fight. There you are, Solidify. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the best passive talents in the game. It makes it so Zhongli's attacks scale off his HP, and right when I remembered this, I switched to an HP Sands and Black Tassel. Now it's time to crush Sumeru. First bit of combat was the Withering Zone and the Dream Domain. All that were there were some fungi, and for the Dream Domain, some hilly churls, and they were quickly taken out. Next, we go to Sumeru City to get our Akasha Terminal and also meet the girl who can actually dance, unlike somebody else. Next, we go to Port Ormos to meet all Haytham and Dory. Later, we test the Knowledge Capsule that we bought from Dory on some fungi, and they were all destroyed. Lastly was the Aramites at the dock, and they were also really easy. Now is Act 2, which is mostly just dialogue. Not even the combat part is interesting to cover, but look at Zhongli's nice ponytail flow through the wind. Let's just move on to Act 3. We meet the Doctor, and go into the forest to fight some pathetic Aramites, and later in the desert we fight some Rifthounds, who did drain my HP quite a bit, but that's only because of corrosion. Next is Act 4. The Aramites were all really frail and were taken out easily. Next was the fight at the LSR Hospital. The Geo Lautro was easy to take down because of Zhongli's elemental skill, and we triggered the monuments with Kave, and now it's time for the Mausoleum. All that were in there were just a bunch of fungi, and they were really easily taken down. We were able to skip the room with only Geo Fungi, but even if we didn't, that would have been easy, I'd bet. Finally is Act 5. First fight was with more Aramites, and it was as easy as all the other groups of Aramites. Next are the Fatui members at Party City, and of course they're taken out with ease because Zhongli's so good. The Electro Hammer guy turned from a menace in other challenges to a joke in this challenge. We meet the Bonafide God and then shuffle through a lot more plot. Next is more Fatui members at the DS Foundry. 
Once again, petrification destroys everybody in there. And not even this ambush from the cryo gun guy could stop me. Now it's time for to put the false god in his place. Does it surprise you that Scaramouche is also destroyed by Zhongli? Yeah, I didn't think so. Lastly is the polluted zone. The Rift Towns were easy, even if they took me to half HP, which I think might be the lowest HP I got to in combat. On the boat were a bunch of Hilly Churls and Electro Law Churls, and there was only one way I could really finish off the Electro Law Churl. I will have order. That's the final enemy, which means we beat Genshin Impact using only Zhongli. Have I proved my point? Zhongli is just the best character in the game, and I will not hear anybody else say otherwise. On the difficulty tier list, it's 100% going at the bottom of Walk in the Park. This is 100% the easiest challenge I've ever done, and it probably forever will be. I can't be sure about the next challenge, but I'm thinking no resin. One of the most important currencies in the game. But until then, I'll leave you with that.